Hey, welcome to Beyond the Pew. Welcome. Pastor Eric Gill. Pastor Bruce Rosa. We good, are here. We're here. Good morning. Yes. Good afternoon. Good evening. A week uh, hiatus. Hiatus. Last week. Spell that because that's was, a very unique word. I was away. You were. And uh, you were here. I was. But Beyond the Pew did not happen. We did not happen because we want to keep that perfect score. I was just going to say, yeah. so that means I have 100% attendance. We want to keep that 100% attendance. Indeed. It's, a, it's, a, Indeed. it's a, you know, yeah. It's important. <laughs> You're yeah. fired up today because you're drinking an energy drink. I am. I'm ready. People can't and you're see. ready, too. Like, you got, he brought two Bibles today. I did bring two, two, two Bibles. Because there's a quote I want to read. Yeah. Um, normally, from, we use, you know, normally we will say that one Bible is essential. Yes. Bruce brought two. He has two swords. It's very, yes, indeed. It's, so I'm, I have a backup, right? It's like it your main and like a backup <laughs> gun almost. Um, but sword. Yeah. Sword, sword of the Spirit. Sword which is the, the Word of God. So... <laughs> Um, I was approached by someone Sunday that is a faithful listener of Beyond the Pew, and uh, I asked if uh, the individual had listened to the most recent one, and he had said he did not, and wow. I said, no, I get it, man, I get it, and I said, uh, I said it's a little different now because we don't have the video, and he's like, oh, I'm just saying, I, I wasn't going to say anything, but it's different without the video, and I started laughing, and I said, so you miss our beautiful faces. That's right. And he laughed That's about that. He didn't really give me an answer. That's right. Um, he doesn't really care for our voices. So, he just but, wanted to uh, see our faces. He wanted to see the faces. So yeah, I'm, the sorry, I'm sorry people can't see him right now. But, uh, <laughs> you're not missing much. I'll yeah, tell you're you not. that. You're not. Uh, you're wearing your normal getup. No, I'm a getup. You um, saw you. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot has happened, though, in the world sports. In the, I mean... And even like in the recent news too, events. Yes, that, yeah. There's a lot of things that have yeah. taken place over the last couple of weeks. Um, minor things to very serious things. To very serious right? things. And um, and so obviously this is a a very important time. This is not having to do with what we're going to talk about today, but yeah. for people to be praying for our our nation, praying for families that are hurting with the most recent school shooting. Yeah. Uh, praying for people who are really dealing with a lot on their yeah. plate right now across the board. Um, a uh, uh, nation really that's at odds with each other within our nation. So it's, it's important to call on believers to be in, in faithful prayer for our and, country. And, and to be watchful because in times like this, like this is when people start wondering and asking questions regarding yes. God. And yes. if you're attentive and watchful, yes, they may, there may be some opportunities presented your way. Absolutely. We, yeah. have, a, we have a great message, a uh, message of the gospel, um, the only true message that brings true hope and and life and so mm -hmm. as believers as times around us grow worse and worse and darker and darker and people are dealing with more and more pain uh, we have answers that we can give to people so just an encouraging yeah. goes right along with our theme of beyond the pew not just living like this in the church but when we're outside the church hurting people who we can care for we can love we can demonstrate the love of christ for and so that we'd be watchful mm -hmm. about those opportunities mm, yeah so right. um so we want to get into a passage today though we've been talking about passages that sometimes are difficult to understand or interpret or passages that maybe people interpret incorrectly yeah and uh we have such a passage today, today. in hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and you brought this up. Yeah. Um, you brought up this passage as one to talk about. And um, so let's talk about it. Yeah, Hebrews I chapter think, 12. I think is uh, – I wouldn't say it's uh, – I don't know if I will call – I will put it on the category of controversial – as much as I would put it on a category of just often misinterpret. Yes. So you know? some people might have a different interpretation of this that yeah. we want to look at what might be a more accurate interpretation. Correct. Right? So Correct. Hebrews chapter 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Yeah. It's a, it's a, if you've been to a funeral or um, a, a celebration of life or yes. uh, even sometimes even in church, you most likely have heard this verse being quoted at one point or another. Yeah, a lot of times this verse is yeah. used, and you know, it's, it's used in there's a couple different interpretations of yeah. it. One is the one that you're alluding to, which is what? What, what have you heard about it's this? It's the one that, you know, that the great cloud of witnesses refers to past believers, our loved ones that they find themselves in heaven and now they're uh, surrounding us or they're attentive or they're watching us 
uh, and they're there to encourage us, to support us, but also to be it's still even at a distance engaged with us, uh, you yeah. know, from heaven to earth. Yeah. Uh, and so you will see it in, in uh, you will see it in funerals being said from the the pulpit or the stage where. They would say, you know, even though they pass away, we're told that we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, meaning that even your loved ones are still observing and watching you. Yes. Yeah. And so that's a oftentimes taught or quoted perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And, you know, along with that is the perspective that maybe to be even more specific, chapters 10 and 11, where it talks about all these individuals that by faith did all the mighty things that they did. Um, A lot of people think it's referencing the specific saints in the previous chapter. Yeah, that's another view. Of Moses and Enoch and others, that they were men, women of faith, and that those are the witnesses that are surrounding us literally surrounding us as in their spirit or their presence is around us watching they and cheering us, and cheering us on. Encouraged. It's like, uh, as he's talking about that race, like they're in the ones in the, in the, in the bleachers. Yes. Screaming and, you know, encouraging us yes. to keep running the race. Yes. And, and here's the thing, like this, I think this is a unique passage because it's one that deals with hurt for the most of the time. Yeah. You know, it's one that when you're hurting, you know, you lost a loved one or you're experiencing some, you're looking for encouragement is one that can allude to that, that, hey, you know, even though you have experienced loss, it's, you know, it's not total loss because you, they still have that connection. You still have that connection between them and heaven. You know, they can still watch you or, or hey, if you're enduring a raise and you're hard and you're doing enduring hardship, you're not alone. You have all of this great sent saints Abraham, Joseph, you know, Samson, observing you and cheering on you, you know. So yeah. it, it is one that is often used because of, of that. It, it kind of brings peace when you're in a time of hurt. Yes, and I think naturally, too, people want to think about, you know, if a loved one has passed or someone that they care greatly for or previous saints or those in the Bible— there's comfort in thinking, man, they're looking down on me and they're smiling or they're looking down. At, and honestly, we there's really not a lot, biblically speaking, scripturally yeah. speaking, about what knowledge those that have gone before that are in the presence of the Lord have or do not have yeah. about the current events of life. How right? engaged they are. We we really don't know. Yeah. Like there's, there's virtually – I can't think of any passages yeah. – that would speak directly to those that are in a position of glory, having knowledge of what is going on with the present situation on earth. Yeah. Um, and I can think of the, the story that Jesus told of the rich man and Lazarus and the rich man who was burning in Hades. He pleads that someone would go and tell his brother about this, yeah. right? And it doesn't mean that he knew what his brother was doing. Well, it he just doesn't means... say that he could see it. it was no, more exactly. Like, but about, that's the only yeah. example I can think of of someone, you know, mentioning an individual that is currently living and caring yeah. about what's going on with their life. Yeah, I think there's another that... reference in Revelation about it does in Tribulation. Uh, don't quote me, but the, similar to the yeah, to there's, a, there's a portion in, in there's a portion in Revelation where it talks about. The, the blood of the saints and the cries of the yeah. rising, saying, how long, how long, until, yeah. our, until yeah. there's vengeance exercise. Yeah. And so you might get a picture there that there yeah. might be some understanding of persecution that's happening. But it doesn't, again, say, hey, like they're engaged or they Correct. can see or they can watch. Yes. You know? And so from what we know about Bi- Scripture, to be in the presence of the Lord, there's the absence of pain, of sickness, of death, of fear, of anxiety, worry, of any kind of yeah. any of that. So it would be difficult to think that our loved ones could be in tune with what's happening on earth with us because they aren't going to have any anxiety or fear or yeah. pain or difficulty or sorrow. Um, and so it's and a hard with, thing. Yeah, and with that too, like we, we, we don't have that, but we do have passages that alludes to how our, uh, those that are in heaven are occupied by, by different tasks or different yes. activities. Yeah, like they are not the worship, idle. Yeah, the worship of the Lord or fellowship. Yes, yes. Uh, even, even work. Like, you know, they have areas of service that they're involved yes. in. Yeah. So it's, you, you know, it's not that they're just simply there, like, 
sitting on a couch, floating on a cloud, floating on a cloud, and yes. watching and just being observant of like about everything that we're doing. Now we can be dogmatic about it, but you we will see more patches that would allude to the fact that they are busy that they're that they're doing stuff yes and so it would be it would be inaccurate to say that the scriptures clearly teach saints that have gone before us loved ones that have passed before us that they're the ones that are surrounding our day-to-day activities watching us cheering us on empowering us or giving us strength yeah that is not taught biblically yeah right it is taught biblically that our strength comes from the Lord. Yeah. It is taught biblically that the presence of the Lord is with us. Yeah. It is taught that the Lord is the one who empowers us through mm-hmm. his spirit. Um, and it is taught that we are running the race, which is alluded to here, yeah. with endurance and our eyes are fixed on Christ. Yeah. Right. So our motivation in running is not the spur- spurring on of people who are watching us from the past or in, in our, our lives, but it is running the race with our eyes fixed on Jesus. So if that is not what's being referred to, what, what is it referring to here yeah. when it says this? Yeah. And, and that's why, again, we, and we said this multiple times in this podcast, like the importance of context Yes, and, 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 and looking at, uh, you know, looking at what he's saying for what he's saying, not us coming with our own prepositions and to try to put yeah. our own, um, presupposition, presupposition yeah, on things yeah. that, that as we're dealing with, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that the key here, and, and this is funny, you definitely heard this, and you've been in church before, you said you definitely heard this too. Uh, but a lot of seminary professors will say, "Hey, whenever you find that verse, the word therefore, you always have to ask yourself the question, what, what is, is it there, there for? for? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as, as a rule, like like you know, looking at a letter. Uh, it's not. It was not written in the way that we have it today, where chapter one, chapter two, like it was a complete letter, a complete yep. book, you know. And so, uh, the when you look at it, you have to see, you have to be mindful of what's preceding, right? And so, yes. chapter ten and chapter eleven, uh, more chapter eleven, where it talks about all of the uh, the hall of fame of faith, right? Yeah. Uh, all of this great old Old Testament saying that uh, did all of these great things by through their faith. Uh, in the promise of the Messiah, in the promise of a Savior, that they were faithful, that they endure hardships, that they were willing to let go of things that, of, them, of themselves, but for the hope of what was coming to come. In light of all of those things that they did, you know, then we can pursue what we ought to pursue, which he said in any verse 1. Yes. So when, it, when by great crowd of witnesses, great cloud of witnesses, if you look at the context, it will be more of a reference to the Old Testament saints in the previous verses. Not that they are surrounding us, but that of what they have done. Like the, the, act, the acts that have been clearly laid out yes. on chapter 11. That, that their lives, their faithfulness speaks to the reality yeah. of the truth that is being taught. Correct. Right. So they are witnesses that we should walk by faith. Their lives are examples of those that have walked by faith. And yeah. I like the way the New King James, like, translate this in the way it's put. It says in New King James, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. In the ESV, it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also. Mm. Right? So in both translations, there's a clear understanding that just like them— let us also do yeah. what they did. Yeah. And and so that I think brings a lot of clarity yeah. to the reality that it's not that these witnesses are standing next to us clapping and cheering us on like go you can do it as much as it is hey let us just like them since we have their example right we have all these faithful witnesses we have all these faithful examples which is exactly what the writer of Hebrews laid out in the mm-hmm. previous chapter let us then follow what they yeah. did as we look not at them, but at Jesus, yeah. who's the author and finisher of our faith. And so yeah. it was never meant to be a motivation that because people are watching us and spurning us on that we do these things. It's always been, let us look to Jesus, yeah. reminded of their examples, reminded of their witness, yeah. reminded of their faith, but looking to Jesus, yeah. right? Who's the author and finisher of our faith. Which I, I, I love, too, how he ends chapter 11 in verse 39. He says, in all these things, so in light of everything that he had said about, like, Abraham, yeah. Noah, uh, Joseph, Moses, all of these individuals that have done great things 
for the sake of the for the sake of the Messiah, for the with the faith in their Messiah. It says in thirty nine, and all of these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Like he ends by saying, Hey, these individuals that we just listed and say all of these great things that they did, like they died with the hope of what's to come. Yes. But now what God has laid out for us is better because what they hope for has already come, yes. and now we know it. You yes. know, yep. the way I would put it is like, what they died uh, hoping, now we, we live knowing. Like, like the, 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 what Jesus did on the cross, it's not a matter of, oh, we hope that we're going to die hoping that he will come. No, no, we know he We know came, he did. He died yes. and he rose, right? Yep. And so in light of that, then he said again, because of this great testimony, because of the great example that these individuals have laid out for us, the call, the purpose of the, or, or another call, uh, uh, the, the, the meat that he's trying to get here, like what he's trying to encourage him, he says, let us also lay aside every weight yep. and sin which clings so closely. Like the focus here is not the great cloud. The focus here, hey, let's get rid of whatever is keeping you from becoming Christ-like and let's continue to run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let's continue to patiently endure whatever comes our way, looking at Jesus, being fixated on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was said before him endured the cross, despising the, sh the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Which, to your point, we do not live life for the appraisal or the content of people. We do it yeah. you know, as a way of honoring and in light of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Yeah, and there's a lot of correlation between the statement he makes about Jesus who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. There's a lot of correlation and connection between what Jesus endured and what those that he previously talks about in chapter 11 endured, mm -hmm. right? Is that they were looking forward to something. And so it talks about their martyrdom, talks about some were sawn in two, some yeah. were thrown into lions, some were all these persecutions and hardships that they endured in faith yeah. because they were looking forward to something that had not yet happened to the Messiah. And it's the same with Jesus says that he despised the cross or um, endured the cross, despising its shame because of the joy that was set before him. Yeah. And so we're called to that same course of action is yeah. that, okay, we have these faithful witnesses in the example that as a believer in Christ who believes in the word of God and has taught the word of God, we're, we're surrounded by example after example after yeah. example of these faithful individuals and what they did as they looked forward and we're also surrounded by the example and presence of Christ, yeah. who in the same manner, like, looked forward to the joy that was set before him and endured the cross, right? And and so we're called to that same thing. Um, this one uh, author says this, and, um, and this is the comment that I wanted to make. He says, the deceased people of chapter 11 gave witness or give witness to the value and blessing of living by faith. Motivation for running the race is not in the possibility of receiving praise from the observing heavenly saints. Rather, the runner is inspired by the godly examples those saints set during their mm. lives. The great crowd are not comprised of spectators, but rather are ones whose past life of faith encourages others to live that way. Mm. And so it's, it's, it's a difference. The difference is we're not talking about spectators. We're talking about examples. Yeah. So we're not talking about the faithful witnesses of, of those that are actually spectators in the stands, like you said, clapping as we're running. Yeah. We're well, talking Bruce, about those Bruce, that Bruce, as Bruce. we're running, we have at the forefront of our heart and mind and looking at the example, but always with the fixation on Jesus. Yeah. And so I think it. I think it's helpful to know that. Yeah. Um, and again, it's not to say to people dogmatically because we don't know yeah. what kind of knowledge, understanding, engagement, they have et cetera, with, you know. that those that we love that have passed before us have about our life right now. We don't know. And if people find comfort and, and peace in thinking, like I'd like to think that you know my my loved one, um, you know, even parents who have lost children yeah. um, at a young age or that have passed, and they and they find solace and comfort in thinking, you know what I. I feel like the Lord would give my, my child the ability to know mom and dad love Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we're, he may, we don't know. Yeah. The Bible is kind of silent on that. Yeah. And, and so it's not to take away anything from someone that finds comfort in that, but it is to, to kind of bring clarity to this passage yeah. that it seems pretty clear contextually that what, what the writer of Hebrews is emphasizing is not a spectator, yeah. but an example and not for the purpose of motivation and running because of the applause of those individuals, mm -hmm 
but the motivation and running of because of their witness yeah and and what was true for them and what is true for us and what is true in christ and and that should really serve as a motivator. Yeah, and, and I think that like it serves as a reminder to us, like not just in this passage, but a, as a r- general rule of thumb, like we base what we believe and what we know from the scripture, not yes. on what we hope to know or hope to or or want to see. And, and we may find some level of comfort, but we need to base what we believe on what is stated in the Bible. Yes, on and what so, the scripture teach. Correct. And so, again, like this passage. It may bring comfort because of what we may want it to say. Yeah. But we cannot do that at the expense of ignoring what it's actually teaching, which is to live a life in light of faith, enduring whatever comes our way, fixating on the race that we're taking, which is the race to live in a, in a way that brings honor and glory to God. Absolutely. You know, and so With I think Christ that's, is our focus. Yeah. And I think that's the the the. The, the focus here, I, I like how Paul talks in Galatians. He says, for I'm now not seeking the approval of man or of God, or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, then I would not be a servant of Christ. Yep. And to having that focus that we live life to bring honor and glory to God, to live in light of the gospel of Christ, not because of how many people can clap or celebrate or Absolutely. people are watching. You yeah. Know? Because but, a lot of times that becomes then about applause for us, yeah, as it, as opposed to glory to God, yeah, right. And so that's not what God's called us and to. We do not live our life for ourselves, right? Amen. 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 Yeah. Well, it was good. Yeah, it was I think good. that was a it was good a passage. One. It was good. Yeah. Um, so again, if people have questions about that. Maybe they disagree with us. Yeah, that's totally they fine. Can comment. We we get emails, and if we don't respond, yeah. it's not that we don't see it. Yeah, we do see it. We do, and we're going to be covering questions mm. that were served as follow-ups. And um, we would have a final episode. We will, and we'll get all the questions. But if you disagree, comment below. Let yeah. us know how you disagree, or give us a message at three three zero three three one six four five three. Yeah, maybe we'll um, bring Pastor Butch, and he'll know. answer all the questions. He'll answer all the questions. We just get to watch um, him. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. But we'll be back next week. Hopefully with a video. No, um, probably nope, not. Nope, not a video next week, yeah. but uh, audio. Next week will be Good Friday, which, yes. by the way, if you're watching and you don't know, if you don't have a place of a t- to attend, yep. either Good Friday or Easter Sunday, we have uh, services happening at Mary and the Bubble Church. We do. We would love to see you. Six o'clock uh, on six, Good Friday. Good, good Child Friday. Child care for two and under. Two and under. And Easter Sunday morning, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock and ten. And ten forty-five. Uh, Thirty, forty-five. <laughs> nine o'clock and ten forty-five. <laughs> Full children's ministry. <laughs> Full children's uh, ministry. For, for Easter Sunday services. Yeah. Bring someone with you. Invite them yeah. to come. Clear opportunity to hear the, about the, the resurrection of, of Jesus. Jesus Christ. So Amen. we hope you can make it. Thanks for tuning in today. Amen. As always. What is your life looking like beyond the pew? Yeah, we hope Adam. it honors the Lord, and we'll see you next week.